Right, let's just get this video over and done with and um, yeah, I know I say that after a lot of unfortunate results that uh, Chelsea do go through but this one I mean it because I'm genuinely in no spirit whatsoever to talk about football or Chelsea for that matter either and um, yeah, that's why I want to get through this video as soon as possible because yeah, I'm just really depressed and deflated after that uh, result from Chelsea 2-2 at home against Sean Dyche's Everton going into the international break. One more point towards the 40 point marker eh? 38 points for us now two points off of the win gets us to 41 points but um yeah no in all seriousness it was nice while it lasted you might say what was nice while it lasted noah being good for a week it was nice while it lasted march 4th to march 11th rest in peace my friend you will never be forgotten gone but not forgotten three games three wins in a row and then we go and draw 2-2 at home to Everton and um, yeah I won't lie it's really deflating I won't you know overreact or say that we're horrendous by any stretch of imagination because I think the performance was actually okay it was quite decent overall and I think if we'd won the game and I think if Ellis Sims just hadn't got that goal out of f***ing thin air I think I would have been sitting here planning to be really optimistic really positive and say that we ground out a win and that you know Graham Potter's Chelsea up until what a week or two ago I think would have probably drawn that game one all and not got the penalty and obviously Havertz stepped up and scored the penalty a really good penalty at that and yeah just Ellis Sims out of fucking thin air like I said just glides past Koulibaly like he wasn't even there and Koulibaly had once again a really good game like he has done in recent weeks but he got absolutely burnt by Ellis Sims there I think it's fair to say and uh, yeah Kepa poor from him as well I think Kepa was really poor for both the goals to be fair I mean the first goal in fairness I won't you know be too harsh on him because it's just a scrappy scrappy goal from a corner which obviously is just a you know pure and utter Sean Dyche goal and uh, yeah after that we responded well got that penalty Reese James a stonewall penalty delighted for Tarkowski because I think he's an absolute prick I absolutely hate Tarkowski he just strikes me as one of those guys who just gives off the vibe of overcompensating for something by you know putting on this big gu big tough guy Pravado it's just just give it a rest mate you're just a wet wipe but yeah in the end I'm sure he'll be laughing because uh, yeah Ellis Sims like I said gets a goal out of nothing earns Everton a massive point in their relegation battle and Chelsea once again slump to a poor result at home our home record this season has been absolutely horrendous to be fair our season in general has been absolutely horrendous i mean the, the things we're being put through this season oh my days like but yeah look at least it's the international break huh well my getaway is watching f***ing ireland so um yeah enjoy the international break fellas and the most annoying part about this game as well is the fact that we'll have to dwell on this now for the next two f***ing weeks till we play aston villa at home on the first of april you know in two weeks time from today and we're gonna hear nothing but fucking negativity regarding Chelsea and Graham Potter now for the next two weeks which I'm just I'm just bored of to be honest can we literally just can we just not talk about Chelsea for the next two weeks until the Aston Villa game that would be absolutely great but yeah don't get me wrong I've been you know one of Graham Potter's biggest supporters especially over the last few weeks but I will say that he does have to take a little bit of responsibility for the result today I think the substitutions made little to no sense really especially bringing Conor Gallagher on with half an hour to go being only 1-0 up I would have brought on someone like maybe Mudrick or Madueke or someone to you know give us a bit more attack outlet and try and you know finish this game off in style yeah I think the substitutions and the timing of them I think was really really strange to be fair and look once again I will say we wouldn't be talking about the substitutions or be talking in a negative vein whatsoever if Sims hadn't just got that goal out of completely nothing but the fact is he did and that's why we're looking at this game with a lot of pessimism and yeah it's just one of the most frustrated times I felt after a Chelsea match which you know I've probably said a lot of times this season countless times I've you know sat down to record match reactions after Chelsea games and thought that it was the most frustrating game or one of the most frustrating games we've experienced this season but we keep going and we keep finding new ways to frustrate the fans and uh, yeah today was one of the main ones especially given the fact that we got that ray of hope that ray of sunshine in this last week or so getting three wins in a row we beat Leeds we beat Dortmund we beat Leicester away we were playing well all just to be shot down especially given the fact as well that the hope was shot down from Decore's goal but brought back up again with Havertz getting that clutch penalty a really good penalty a cold celebration as well celebrating in Pickford's face who is another absolute clown I'll be honest and then shot down once again from that Sims goal and uh, yeah that's something we're gonna have to dwell on now for the next two weeks like I said and and uh, yeah, it's just, it's just, just so f***ing annoying, isn't it? And you know what I think a portion of this result could come down to as well? overconfidence because especially after you've gone through a horrendous run of form like we have done in recent months then you pick up a little bit of confidence with those three wins and then you're kind of thinking oh look we're back and you know the fans have really bought into it over the last you know week or so me included where we've ironically just been like we're back we're gonna you know win the champions league we're gonna fucking beat everyone in our path but obviously it's ironic and i think maybe maybe some of the players have bought into that you're not safe yet you've only won three games out of what the last 20 something you're not safe yet put your 
and foot back on the pedal. And yet, maybe the overconfidence could have been a factor in the poor result today. And uh, yet, maybe we see a bounce back against Aston Villa in two weeks' time. Right, positives. Any sort of positives we can get onto because I am sick and tired of talking negatively about my football club. Enzo Fernandez, what a player. What a fucking player we have on our hands. His ability to, you know, pass the ball, spread the ball forward, the intent he puts in his passes as well. He just makes so much happen in this Chelsea midfield. We saw that piece of skill he did in the edge of the box as well. He's got absolutely everything. He's got bite and tenacity in his defensive play as well. Enzo Fernandez, we've got ourselves a world-class player in the making here. And yeah, he's one player that's definitely, definitely not responsible for any bit of, you know, detriment we've suffered in recent weeks as Chelsea fans. Enzo Fernandez, you are an absolute baller. I'm acting like he's watching this video, but you know what I mean. Joao Felix as well, absolutely brilliant today. I thought everything went through him and finally got his goal at Stamford Bridge. Finally got that little bit of luck that he's been needing. And you know, I just don't understand why some Chelsea fans are, you know, saying that they don't want this guy to be signed permanent. First of all, it's not our money. Second of all, he's an absolutely brilliant player. He's shown that in his, you know, few games he's had at Chelsea so far. He's had that little bit of, you know, misfortune in terms of the fact he's hit the woodwork on countless occasions. He's pretty much hit the post of the crossbar every single week or scored an offside goal. And today was finally a bit of luck, a very good finish, which finally hit the post and actually went in afterwards. And um, yeah, I was delighted for him. I think he was absolutely brilliant today. Tricky as usual with his tricks and flicks. And yeah, just overall added a lot of spark invention. I thought Koulibaly was obviously very good as well up until the, you know, Sims goal. And obviously that will overshadow his performance now. I thought Badia Sheila and Fafana were really good as well. But can you say the back three played well when we conceded two goals? I think Pulisic, it wasn't really his best game. It never really is, to be fair, in terms of the fact that he's been quite poor for a while now. But I'll cut him a bit of slack, to be fair, because I think there was one or two moments today where he showed a little bit of, you know, trickery. And I think he scored a really nice disallowed goal as well. But I will cut Pulisic some slack, like I said, because he's a man who's barely played any football over the last, you know, even two years, I'd say. So I will cut him a little bit of slack. And I know there's a lot of Chelsea fans that'll dig him out solely, but I think that is massively unfair, in my opinion. Havertz, again, wasn't his brightest game, but he did put himself about, scored a really good penalty, and, um, yeah, showed balls and ice cold steel to, you know, score the penalty. But, uh, but yeah, we go now for the international break. Then we play Aston Villa at home. Then we play Liverpool at home. Then Wolves away. And then that first leg at the Bernabeu against Real Madrid. And, uh, yeah, hopefully those three Premier League games before that can give us a little bit of, you know, a warm up for that Real Madrid game and give us Chelsea fans a little bit more optimism after, you know, the last week or so that we can go to Real Madrid and uh, yeah, do them over two legs because uh, with a performance like that or a result like that, it doesn't, you know, give you much courage as a Chelsea fan that we're going to be one of the best teams, if not the best team in the world, the champions of Europe, in fact. And look, like I said, I think the performance was decent overall. I think in terms of the fact that we were able to cut through Everton really well, I think for the first 15 or 20 minutes, I think we struggled to break through the lines given how Everton completely outnumbered us in midfield, given the fact they had to Corey Onana and Idrissa Gay in midfield. But I think as the game went on, as I said, after, you know, 20, 25 minutes, I think we've started to break them down a little bit more it started to be a little bit more fluid and created a lot of chances in fact we had eight shots inside the box in the first half and started to flood men forward and it was just a little bit of lack of cutting edge really in the first half and yeah we did get those two goals of course but um yeah couldn't keep everton from uh, scoring two goals themselves and uh, yeah that's why i say even though the performance was good the result most certainly wasn't and that's why we are not going to focus on the performance overall but yeah 11 premier league games left in this absolutely a torrid premier league season we're basically just building in the premier league towards the remaining champions league fixtures and acting as a pre-season really for next season when hopefully we can get our shit together and actually you know first of all get back into the top four that's the most annoying part about this transitional phase is we just have to you know focus on getting back in the top four which is really annoying because as a Chelsea fan we want to be going for league titles every single season which more than likely isn't going to be the aim or most certainly isn't going to be the aim for next season but yeah before I ramble on for too much longer Chelsea fans let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on this game and you know try and be a little bit level-headed because obviously most Chelsea fans are going to be like fucking pot I fucking hate him we're shit but let's not overreact too much yes i know we are shit and you'd be right in saying that but let's not overreact too much because um yeah we have nothing to play for in the premier league really we have no chance whatsoever of getting top four we have an outside chance of getting europa league or conference league football which to be fair we aren't too fussed about not getting so yeah let me know in the comment section below leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it would be massively appreciated and also if you could subscribe to the channel as well that would also be massively appreciated because we're closing in now on 2,000 subscribers the support on this channel has been immense recently so hit that subscribe button to help me get there as soon as possible to 2,000 subscribers and um, yeah I'll see you guys in my next video we go again after the international break up the fucking shelves and um, yeah chat to you later